welcome to Season 2, Episode 8 of Chris Cast. I just recorded a trailer and I called it Mansplaining Chris Cast. 50-year-old man mansplaining cisgender entitled wisdom with the entitled expectation that anybody cares. And that's what you're going to hear. I'm going to spend 8 to 10 to 15 to 20 minutes going on and on about something that just popped into my head. And I'm going to assume that you'll be riveted to your chair. Come back and listen to Chris Cast. Listen, I'm not that excited about the prospect of Trump being reelected. I'll be honest with you. I had hope that uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard would be. <laughs> well, I wanted Tulsi Gabbard to be the uh, the Democratic uh, candidate for president, but um, I think that uh, that Joe Biden is a a monster in uh, in grandpa clothing, or um, more like cocksure, overly like overly vain uncle uncle clothing great uncle clothing but the man has a terrible 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 record uh when it comes to make uh, to to, uh, um racial justice i mean he just does he and hillary clinton have been have been the the carriers of the entire super, you know, super predator, the entire concept that there are people in the streets who cannot be, who cannot be um, recovered, who must be thrown in jail because, to quote Biden, uh, they will, they will take a pipe and they will kill my wife. And the fact that they have a history, especially Biden has a history of creating entire, um, entire traps, entire mouse traps, entire uh, glue traps designed only to capture black Americans is just, is just appalling. Um, and it has reverberated throughout the country uh, in a way that has resulted in much more sadness in uh, minority and, and impoverished populations than any douchey, terrible thing that Trump has done in his capabilities as being a private citizen, being a slumlord, a racist slumlord in the Bronx versus um, the all-powerful senatorial track that uh, that Biden has had access to over the last 40, 50 years, um, you know, since at least 77. And, and, and I dare say that he was extremely influential when it came to pushing Ronald Reagan, who I think is an antichrist, um, pushing him towards really... Uh, putting his boot onto the neck of the black community in America. So for that, he shouldn't get a pass. Now, it's a terrible decision to have to make, right? Do you do you continue this chemotherapy uh, in the form of uh, of Donald um, Trump and continue to to exacerbate and kill, just exacerbate and make the country sick, you know, chemotherapy kills the patient to the point where the cancer dies, like, do we invest in another four years of chemotherapy to, to put the American system under the kind of duress that will really result in major reform and change, or do we just go back to the mediocre race relations uh, under under uh, under Obama, you know, there were no great 
uh, coup de gras, coup coup de gras under um, under the Obama presidency. I mean, he did offer a lot of a lot of um, confidence building um, by being a, uh, if you will, a uh, a barrier breaker. Um, in in so far that uh, boys and girls really want to become uh, astronauts, you know, after the first American uh, astronauts went into space, right? He is a barrier breaker. He is a role model, and he's a damn fine man. Like, like personally, um, what would Obama do if if Obama were just um, on the surface, right? Obama. Uh, I really am disappointed by Obama because of his continuation of the war and his um, breaking of promises to close Guantanamo. But if we get Biden, uh, we are going to just return into a standard operating procedure of, I hate to use these words, but uh, neoliberalism and uh, neoconservatism, neocon light. Uh, which will mean that uh, all the um, all the revolutionary fervor and all the protest fervor and all the uh, black right black rights black life black lives now black rights now black justice now fervor is going to be is going to to leave the sails right uh, anybody who who is in the business of of trying to um, convert America into a uh, social democracy is going to lose their momentum if Biden is in office. He doesn't want single payer. He doesn't want universal health care. He doesn't want um, uh, debt forgiveness. He doesn't want uh, a free university for all. He, you know, none of those things are in his wheelhouse. They uh, were in the wheelhouse maybe of Elizabeth Warren, uh, definitely Bernie Sanders, um, somewhat uh, my beloved Tulsi Gabbard. But I dare say that if Trump gets another four years, the entire country, both pro-Trump and anti-Trump, will be so apoplectic. And it, this will, this will um, be the equivalent of of sweating out a fever, you know, this isn't uh, cold compresses and hoping it'll go away. This is literally um, pushing America to a brink it hasn't been in since the 60s or the 30s or, you know, um, various times in the 19th century. Now, that's a huge risk, right? That is a huge risk. I, I have a friend in the intelligence community, and he tells me that if if Biden wins, then that's going to make the the right, uh, who he calls patriots and constitutionalists, uh, they're going to push them to be apoplectic, and they're going to be the ones who are going to man the barricades and take to the streets instead of uh, instead of. Um, progressives and BLM and uh, and and racial justice warriors. It'll be, geez, I can't even. I don't even want to imagine what that's going to be like. So, uh, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But I believe that um, Biden is so milk toast and so. Uh, I mean, he's such a monster. Holy crap! I know he played granddad as VP and he didn't do anything except smile and take the train. But if you look at his service record, um, he did he did more things to create um, institutional racism three uh, not sixties, not you know not antebellum, uh, but the kind of racism that secretly uh, through double secret uh, enforcement of laws um, and the attempt at trying to get people off the street who do minor crimes, especially through the um, uh, the divide between crack cocaine and powder cocaine. I mean, that was primarily designed 
to to affect black youth, to affect affect black communities, and uh, with the express purpose of taking people who were unfixable, broken people, he said, no matter what, you know, no matter what, they are broken off the street, and that was racial, that was racist. You can't deny that with just saying, well, it happened in the past, and he's a different man now, because you you know by looking at his current record and what he's promoting, it's not true. Anyway, I uh, thought I wouldn't be controversial at 8.57 in the morning. This was recorded... Uh, I know this is going out late, but this was recorded on the 18th, uh, is that the 18th of June? Um, Hey Google, what's the date today? It is Thursday, June 18th, 2020. Alexa, what's the date today? Today is Thursday, June 18th. All right, so that... By the way, I noticed you haven't asked me for the weather in a while. Remember, you can just say, what's the weather? What's the weather? Currently, in Arlington, it's 71 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies. Today, you can expect thunderstorms with a high of 79 degrees and a low of 66 degrees. Enjoy your morning, Chris. Thank you, Alexa. So, uh... Of course. (laughs) So this is going to be an indoor working day. I know that if you've been listening to me at all, you know that I like to get my butt out of bed and work from the streets, uh, from picnic table to picnic table. But it looks like this is going to be an indoor day. I'm going to be an indoor cat today. Thanks for listening. 10 minutes and 55 seconds. Okay, 11 minutes and I'll I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to Season 2, Episode 8 of Chris Cast. Um, This was pretty controversial. I was definitely talking out of my bottom, but I have strong opinions on this, and I do not want to either confirm nor deny that I want to see the world burn like a phoenix and then return um, more beautiful and more in the promise and and uh and 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 uh more in the promise of the experiment known as America. If that is un American, then please uh forgive me. And uh stay tuned for the next self indulgent uh entitled white man rant uh of a certain age, uh stereotype Frickin' don't make another podcast, please, not another podcast. Uh, Blame Adam Curry and John C. Dvorak, because I've been listening to them for 12 years, 10 years, on No Agenda Show, and they just make me feel like if I start chatting, something useful will fall out of my head. So let me know if that's true. And also, I tried something new this episode, which is background music. Tell me if that sucks, and I'll stop it, okay? Mahalo. Until next time, bye-bye.